One to go up top, dumps it off across the middle, for that. What is going on, everybody? What is going on, everybody? What is going on, everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here for another episode of Treeb Talks. What is going on, everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here, and today was a little bit of an executive decision. Um, I didn't make any AAF content this week. Don't worry if you are still in the Treeb Talks AAF pick contest. Uh, Mr. Amp850J, if you're watching this. Leave your comment, uh, picks in the comment section down below. David Florio also, if you want in on this week. Uh, just make sure you comment on this video. Hopefully you watch this video because uh, this week in Jags, you know, culture and Jags news and stuff, it's just been, it's been busy. It's been busy in weird ways. It's been busy as in like, I have a lot of videos that I wanted to make regarding a lot of situations regarding the Jags, you know. And it's not even like, the Nick Foles news was huge. But the Jags, you know, it's not like we have signed anybody blockbuster. Today we signed Jeff Swaim from the from the Cowboys, who is supposedly going to be our tight end. This is going to fix everything, I guess. But uh, <clears throat> I'm not going to report on that too heavy because I don't think that that was really uh, a signing that we really need to cover in uh, in depthly, you know. So what we're going to be talking about today, though, is what should the Jacksonville Jaguars do at the seventh overall pick? There's only a couple of scenarios that I see happening, especially now that the Jags have signed Nick Foles to that big money deal. Is a quarterback still on the board for Jacksonville, or is now the time to think about something else and really just give up on Dwayne Haskins and Kyler Murray altogether? Well, I'm about to answer that question, ladies and gentlemen. This is what should the Jacksonville Jaguars do at pick number seven. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen. So I think the first and the most obvious one that the Jags should do is if Haskins or Murray are still on the board, they should take one or the other. But I don't really agree with that with Kyler Murray 100%. I think if Haskins is there, I think if it, somehow the Jags got lucky enough and fortunate enough that Dwayne Haskins has fallen into their lap at number seven, oh, by all means, take Dwayne Haskins. I will be so upset if Dwayne Haskins falls right into the Jaguars lap at seven and they don't get him like that would make me beyond angry like that would that would uh that would make a lot of Jags fans angry I would think I think the internet would explode if Dwayne Haskins was there at seven and the Jags did not select him but it's becoming more and more likely that the Jags aren't going to be going quarterback in the first round so Dwayne Haskins and that whole idea we're going to have to put on hold uh, the reason I said I don't really feel that way with Kyler Murray is because I think we could use Kyler Murray to our advantage if he is there at number seven, which is the first scenario I'm going to be talking about, and that is training back. I think training back now, uh, shout-outs to Kenneth Tucker. Kenneth Tucker was one of the uh, biggest advocates even before we signed Fools when we did that uh, live interactive mock draft. He was a big advocate of trading back and getting more picks in order to uh, – you know, improve the team overall so then that way we have more picks, we can improve the team in the draft, you know, make sure that we fill a lot of holes in a lot of rounds in this draft, making sure we get more draft picks. And I think that if Kyler Murray's on the board at seven, that the ja the Jacksonville Jaguars should trade with the Miami Dolphins at number se number 17 because today they just traded Ryan Tannehill to the Tennessee Titans, which is wild. Because, because uh, now they have, like, two really shitty quarterbacks, Mariota and Ryan Tannehill. But, I mean, they had two shitty quarterbacks before Mariota and uh, <coughs> Blake Gabbert. But, you know, I can't talk my shit because the Titans, again, are, like, 4-0 and against us in the last two years. Although I do got the Tuck the Fightin' shirt on. I uh, just realized that. Tuck the Fightin's, uh, boys and girls, you know, because fuck them, you know? Yeah, you know what I mean? Anyway, so we're getting a little off topic with that one, but... Anyway, they did trade Ryan Tannehill to the Tennessee Titans, so the Dolphins are looking to improve the quarterback position. I don't think they have enough really give to trade up all the way to like one or even eight, any higher than that. So I think seven is about the best place for them to trade up, especially with Murray still on the board. And hell, they might even do it with Jones and Locke still on the board because you never know what this Miami front office can do. Uh, they're they're a little wild sometimes, you know. They're not necessarily the greatest group of uh, NFL executives and NFL front office. Uh, so you know, I could see them trading up with us to get Locke or to get Jones. 
uh, so they can take the number seven spot, draft their quarterback, call it good. And, uh, you know, there might be some Jags fans that would be upset about not taking Kyler Murray, but I think that a lot of us need to just kind of wake up, smell the coffee. There's no way we signed Nick Foles to that much money for him to just sit on the bench at any point this year. You know, he's our guy, whether you like it or not, for the good or the better. Nick Foles could go out there, throw more picks and touchdowns, but the Jags ain't going to bench him because we paid him so much money. Paid him literal starting quarterback money. So, you know, top 15, I think, quarterback money. So the the chances of us drafting a rookie and really trying to bring him on is really unlikely uh, in the first round at least. I think, like I said, I believe last video, in the second, third round, I think the Jags could target a guy like Daniel Jones uh, or even like uh, Ty Tyree Jackson out of Buffalo, which he's going to be an exciting player, and I would not mind drafting him uh, late at all. Will Greer as well. I've had that. I've heard that name being thrown around quite a bit. So you know, the third round quarterback wouldn't be that bad. Uh, trying to groom him behind Nick Foles, and hopefully, hopefully, could be something and come out uh, at the other end in a positive, positive way. Now that was the trade back option, and uh, who would we get at number 17 if we traded back with the Miami Dolphins? I would say let's get Andre Dillard, offensive lineman, out of Washington State. This is a great year to draft offensive lineman if that is a position of need for your team, and it's even better in the later rounds, even in the second round. Like This is one of the best offensive lineman drafts since about 2013. And in 2013, a lot of them were bust, but you know, coming out of college... That was, you know, the lineman draft. The year Jokel went, Eric Fisher, you know, top one and two picks. Uh, so this year, <clears throat> this year there's a lot of good O linemen as well. I think there's going to be three or four of them gone in the top ten. And Andre Dillard might be the most athletic one out of any of these offensive linemen uh, to date. He's just kind of getting buried by a lot of talent like Jay Juan Taylor. Uh, God, I can't. Jay Juan Taylor, I know for a fact. And then, God, who am I thinking of? Thinking of that, oh, God, uh, it's got to bug me. I'm gonna cut that out. I probably won't cut that out, but uh, you know that's uh, that's what I'm saying is that this whole offensive line is just it's great. You know, everybody that is supposed to go on the top five that's an O lineman is really really talented. And Andre Dillard's right up there with him. He's one of the most athletic lineback uh, linebackers, athletic offensive linemen uh, in this year's draft, and I think that uh, he'd be a good selection for the Jags, and I think that. Uh, whether he'd be a tackle, you know, a starting tackle, that's where he played at Washington State, but he's very versatile, or maybe go to guard and give A.J. Can a run for his money. I'm not too sure, but I think Andre Dillard would be a good pickup for the Jags if we traded back with the Miami Dolphins. Now, if we stuck at seven, <sighs> if we stuck at seven, who should we get? If we're stuck at seven, the situation is Haskins and Murray are gone. And you got J1 Taylor, who who is getting projected quite a bit, or DK Metcalf. You know, those are those are the two guys that uh, Jags fans and you know mock drafters alike are saying who the J the Jags should draft at number seven. And I would not have a problem with J1 Taylor. You know, and the more and more I think about DK Metcalf, the more and more I think, man. I don't like your feet. I've done some film. I've done. I've looked at some film, man. I looked at his combine, and you know, at first, you know, from a from a person that has not seen much film on DK, and you've just heard about his fan, uh, his combine numbers, I don't blame you for wanting to take him at seven. I don't blame you for thinking, oh, this is going to be the guy. This guy is going to be our number one wide receiver. You know what I mean? Uh, I don't blame you for thinking that, but he truly is just not that guy. A.J. Brown, who's on the same team as him, Antonio Brown's cousin, is actually better than D.K. Metcalf. And that's another thing, too. If we're going to trade back at 17, I think that uh, Andre Dillard is a viable option as well as A.J. Brown. I think A.J. Brown at 17 would be dope. Uh, and, you know, if we trade back in any sense, in any sort of the way, I think that uh, if A.J. Brown's there, I think the Jags should take a crack at him because that's a wide receiver we've been looking for. And there's a lot of people talking about D.J. Chark and if D.J. Chark is going to be, you know, this new number one guy in reemergence. I really hope so. You know, I truly, truly, truly hope so. Uh, he's, he's talented. He takes the top off the defense, and, you know, he could be the deep threat that uh, – Nick Foles really needs and you know they compare him to Alshon Jeffrey which is very fair their body types are very similar but he's gonna have to catch the ball like Alshon Jeffrey if he's gonna need to get that comparison you know what I mean so AJ Brown's another guy uh reliable he has better feet than DK 
And he'll probably be available at 17 as well, you know. Uh, not a lot of teams really need wide receivers except for, you know, us and maybe a couple of other teams scattered in there. Uh, Buffalo really addressed their wide receiver need during uh, free agency, so it's kind of curious to see what they're going to do as well. So, you know, and again, in that trade back situation, hopefully get A.J. Brown as well as maybe Andre Dillard. But if we stuck at seven, those are the two names you hear thrown around the most, D.K. Metcalf or Juwan Taylor. Now, I think Jawan Taylor makes the most sense if we're just going to stick at seven and pick somebody. Just rip that Band-Aid off of me, man. Like, literally, just rip it off. Because, like, I don't want us to draft an offensive lineman, but I know that that's what we're going to have to do. And that's what we need to do. Because we need to solidify this offensive line, which is already pretty solid if it stays healthy. And, you know, make sure that uh, Nick Foles is getting protected and gets the time that he needs to throw the ball. But, you know, he's... He's looking like he might be the guy uh, at number seven, Jawan Taylor. But there's also been some talks about some tight ends going number seven overall. And, you know, I hear a lot of people talk about saying no tight end is worth a top ten pick, all this and all that. But, you know, tight ends in this, in this like, league, man, they're reliable. They're, like, just as reliable and just as valuable as a wide receiver. And there's two of them that are really good from the same team, uh, Fan Hawkinson, who I would not have a problem signing or drafting either one of those guys at number seven. I think that if you're going to be bitching about drafting uh, one of the two best tight ends in the draft at seven overall, you're really just being nitpicky because you got one of the best tight ends, if not the best tight end in the draft. And that's a position of need. I don't care about Mr. Swain. <laughs> He's not going to be our starting tight end next year. You know, we're going to try and bring in somebody young and Hawkinson is that young tight end that young buck that's going to come in and hopefully be the starter and that's another guy that I have absolutely no problem with the Jaguars uh, drafting at seven I think it comes down to J1 Taylor out of Florida the offensive lineman DK Metcalf Ole Miss wide receiver and then we got uh, Ty Hawkinson <coughs> out of Iowa and, you know, I think all three of those guys are viable options at number seven. But as of who I think the Jags should draft, I think the Jags should draft Hawkinson. But what do I think that they will do? I think they'll draft Taylor. And, you know, I'm not necessarily against that. Like I said, we need to solidify this offensive line to really help the run game as well as to help uh, Nick Foles stay protected, have time to throw the ball. So, you know, I'm not against that. What I would, My dream scenario is to trade back with the Miami Dolphins, that Kyler Murray still on the board, trade back with the Dolphins, and uh, select Andre Dillard or select A.J. Brown at number 17. That is my dream situation of what the Jaguars should do in this year's NFL Draft. And that was what I think the Jacksonville Jaguars will do at pick number seven. What did you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget, you can check the links down below as well. You can like me on Facebook at Troop Talks. Follow me on Twitter at Troop Talks. Follow me on Instagram at Trey Von Pixley. Also, if you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button. Click the bell icon to get notified every single time I drop a new video. I drop new content on this channel six days a week. Ain't nobody out working me. Those are just straight facts. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And as always, you guys have a great day.